The ghost sponsor is Kinnick Fox, who has a really cool name, so kudos on that. The ghost is cursed to haunt the cave for pretty much forever. In order to win, she must find ghost tiles by enlisting the help of other players. Then, she must lock five artifacts from her mortal life onto these ghost tiles. She draws energy from this and is then able to escape the cave for the win by exiting through the entrance tile. Let's get set up. First, before game setup, when using the ghost, two ambush tiles, two event tiles, and two treasure tiles are returned to the box. Instead of these six tiles, two ghost tiles are shuffled randomly into each pile. These are shuffled until no ghost tiles show on top. Next, place the blocking the ghost reference card somewhere visible to all eyes. This is the focus cube, which is set to the zero space on the focus track. Now take these possession cards and shuffle them according to the following. If three or more players are in the game, possession cards for each role being used are taken, returning the rest to the box. If playing solo or two players, refer to the individual setups in the rulebooks. If any of the possession cards refer to Flare, then this Flare variant card is set next to the map. Now to distribute artifacts. If there are three or more players, one artifact is given to each other player except the cave. The remaining artifacts are placed on the entrance tile. If this is a solo or two player game, all artifacts are instead placed on the entrance tile. Now, at the start of the ghost's first turn, she is placed on any unoccupied dark tile. If no such tile exists, a dark tile can be placed, and the ghost is placed there. The ghost goes seventh in turn order, after the ghoul, and she has three phases in her turn. One, resolve possession card. Two, move and act. Three, select possession card. At the end of another player's turn, the ghost might take a possession turn, which we'll go through in a little bit. Let's go over the ghost stats. This is focus, which can increase throughout play, and sets movement and influence for the ghost's current turn. Movement is the number of spaces the ghost can move per turn. Influence determines the strength of the ghost telekinesis and possession powers. Phase 1. Resolve Possession Card. This phase is skipped during the ghost's first turn. Otherwise, if there is an unrevealed possession card on the possession space of the player board, the ghost gains one focus. Then, if the unrevealed card is the ghost card, it can be revealed to gain its listed bonuses to movement and influence until the end of the turn. The ghost cannot reveal this card if any player pieces on a ghost tile with a locked artifact. Phase 2. Move and Act. During this phase, the ghost will move and use telekinesis in any order or combination. The ghost may move a number of spaces up to her movement. She can move through walls and into any spaces, including open spaces. Other players may enter the ghost space without effect. The ghost cannot end this phase on an open space, a space with any artifacts, or a space with player pieces who carry any artifacts. During this phase, she may use telekinesis to move an object. Objects or tokens or other player pieces. These objects must be orthogonal to the ghost in order to be moved. Visibility does not matter for this. Using this ability, she may move an object in a straight line away from, toward, or onto her own space. The ghost influence determines the number of different objects she can move per turn. It is also the total number of spaces that she can move each object per turn. She can split up this object's total space of movement throughout her turn, as long as total movement does not exceed her influence. A non-locked artifact can be moved into dark or lit tiles and into spaces that hold other player pieces. It can also move into the ghost space, but cannot end this phase in the same space as the ghost. The non-locked artifact can also be moved through a wall as long as the ghost has three or more influence and if she has not yet moved it during the turn. Once moved through a wall, it cannot move further during the same turn. Crystals, events, vaults, and bomb tokens cannot be moved through telekinesis. The knight character cannot be moved if she has a hero cube assigned to her shield. Phase 3. Select Possession Card During this phase, the ghost will collect all possession cards except the card on the mental block space. Then she chooses and places a possession card face down on the possession space. The other cards are set aside. Let's talk about possession turns. At the end of another player's turn, the ghost may reveal the possession card on her possession space if the card matches that role. She cannot reveal the possession card if any player pieces on a ghost tile with a locked artifact. In games without a cave player, the player taking a turn places or collapses tiles before the ghost chooses to reveal a possession card. 
Now, once a possession turn has begun, the character's turn is played from the beginning, using that role's normal rules. The possession card indicates what stats are used, and any restrictions on the card must be followed. Victory conditions and states such as Grit, Fury, and others are tracked as normal, unless otherwise noted. If the ghost is prompted to gain or use components of the possessed player, she takes them from the appropriate deck or supply. At the end of the possession turn, unused cards are discarded and unused components are returned to the supply. Possession turns are not a separate turn, so there are still use limits. If the dragon player removed a cube from the pride track, for example, the possessed dragon cannot remove a second pride cube as it would break the limit for the dragon's turn. The ghost does not gain access to private information, such as the player's cards. The cave character is an exception, as noted by the possessed cave card. Let's talk about artifacts. These are items that once belonged to the ghost in her mortal life. When placed on focal points, they give the ghost power enough to escape the cave and her curse. The ghost wins if she locks five artifacts to ghost tiles, then escapes the cave through the entrance tile. Each of the six artifacts has different artwork, but they each have the same rules. Each artifact shows its side without the blue order at the start of the game. During the ghost turn or a possession turn, if an artifact or a player carrying one enters a ghost tile without a locked artifact, that artifact is locked to the ghost tile. That artifact is then switched to its blue bordered side. Artifacts are not locked in two cases. 1. If a non-possessed player carrying an artifact enters a ghost tile on their own turn. 2. If a non-possessed player forces another non-possessed player carrying an artifact to enter a ghost tile. Once an artifact is locked, it cannot be moved. If a ghost tile with a locked artifact is ever removed from the map, the artifact still counts towards victory conditions. If an artifact is ever locked during a possession, the possession turn ends immediately. Each player may only carry one artifact. The cave and the ghost cannot collect or carry artifacts. If the goblin player gets an artifact during setup, the artifact is given to the first tribe to reveal. If a tribe carrying an artifact leaves the map, the artifact leaves as well. The artifact is then given to the next tribe that is revealed. Combined, the goblin tribes may only carry one artifact, not three. During a possessed turn, the ghost may force the player to drop a carried artifact onto their space. Just the same, a possessed player who is not carrying can be forced to pick up a non-locked artifact on their space. These are ghost tiles, which can lock artifacts. Whenever the cave has a ghost tile in its hand, it must be placed before any other tiles, even on another player's turn. These tiles show both the ghost symbol and another symbol and are resolved as such. A ghost tile without a locked artifact cannot be collapsed. The next eligible tile must be removed instead. Let's see how the ghost interacts with other players. First, other players cannot target the ghost with attacks, powers, or effects unless specifically noted. There are only two ways for other players to affect the ghost. First, if any player piece except the ghost is on a ghost tile with a locked artifact, she cannot reveal a possession card. Second, other players can cause mental block to the ghost. During another player's turn, that player can cause the ghost to have a mental block by spending these values listed here. For example, the dragon would discard power cards equal to influence. The player piece must be on the same space or adjacent to the ghost to do this. Once the mental block is paid for, the ghost removes the possession card matching the blocking player from her possession deck or space. It is then placed face up on the mental block space. She does not take a possession turn for this, and she does not gain one focus during her next resolve possession card phase for having an unrevealed card. If a second card is added to her mental block space, the first card is returned to her possession deck. A note on force movement. When it comes to force movement, the ghost cannot be moved onto spaces that hold artifacts. If a tile with non-locked artifact is removed, the player who removed it must move the artifact to an adjacent space without the ghost. Artifacts cannot be moved through walls during force movement. This concludes our video on the ghost. Thanks for watching. The executive sponsor of this series is Mario Flores. The wall sponsors are Daniel Richardson and Mary Boz.